So welcome everyone to this uh, third session of this week together with the daily meditations. Uh, wonderful as always to be here uh, with all of you, with all of us. It's um, very moving just to know that, that we're here coming together, uh, many in in Europe, particularly in the UK, but also looking at the chat this morning, some in South Africa, in Australia, myself here in the Middle East, uh, quite beautifully um, spread around the globe. Uh, as, as many of you know, I really enjoy having that sense of uh, all of us spread around the the globe. I remember when I was first starting to practice, uh, we had this saying, a sangha without borders. Yeah, for kind of what was then, we had to travel to India to, um, to be with international sangha, actually any kind of sangha for many of us. And a sense of a sangha without borders from all over the world. And now, we turn on our screen and turn on our inner compass and come together in this way. An extra welcome to any of you joining for the first time. I see someone has just written that. So a really warm welcome if you're here for the first time. And feeling this sangha without borders, without boundaries, but sharing something quite profound as we're each in our uh, particular locations on the globe and still have that sense of connectedness. So this session uh, this morning will uh, follow the usual form of about a 10 minute reflection followed by a half hour meditation which will be guided um, and finding that balance between uh, speaking in silence in the meditations and then some time for questions and reflections at the end and uh, for those of you who don't know me my name is Zohar and one of the teachers that lead these sessions with in Sangha Life. As I've mentioned before, I've got I've got quite cold at the moment, and it's one of the things that I like about it. It slows me down. So if I appear extra slow this morning, then you know the reason, and you know that there's something quite enjoyable about that. So we've been <coughs> exploring this thread um, this week so far. This thread of now, when there's an experience, any experience, yeah. it is shaped, it is constructed, conditioned by the object in attention, whatever's in attention in the moment, and the way of relating to that object. Yeah. That's the thread of insight we've been unpacking. And it's a, it's a really important, valuable thread of liberating wisdom liberating insight that we can follow this understanding how experience is shaped and conditioned and that it is shaped and conditioned and yesterday we were touching on that now, ah any moment of experience it's shaped it's conditioned what happens when we remember that when we consider that we bring that into um, awareness and then also the interest in how it is conditioned and what it where it leads you know how how it's conditioned does that lead to ill being to distress to um, dissatisfaction unease or does it lead to well-being to release to wakefulness and so this way of opening up yeah. the parcel 
of experience yeah into this ah there's an object and there's these layers of ways of relating around it a bit like pass the parcel but children's game used to love it probably still would if i played it um you know that kind of unpacking in that way reminds us that we have a part to play that in any moment yeah, so this shaping conditioning of experience is an ongoing process it's not just that it happens and that's frozen in time it keeps happening yeah it's a process and that understanding that at any time we can meet our experience we can relate to it in ways that reduce ill being that reduce dukkha dissatisfaction and that increase well-being for ourselves but not just for ourselves for those that we're in contact with and for all beings and so this is possible for us it's possible for us this is what the buddha uh, was teaching and encouraging us to do and it's not necessarily easy there's this beautiful story that after buddha's awakening um, and the kind of long time it took him to get there and then to digest and absorb his awakening. He, he just thought, well, this isn't, you know, this is beautiful. This is liberating, you know, but there's no way I can uh, explain this to others. It's too complicated. And so he, he was, you know, going to keep it to himself. And then the, the story is that this uh, heavenly being, this deva, uh, came down and begged the Buddha to teach, begged the Buddha to share these teachings and said to him, there are beings with little dust in their eyes who are ready to hear this teaching. Beings with little dust in their eyes are ready to hear these teachings of, of liberation and to apply them. And so the Buddha was convinced and went on to teach for 40 years. But of course, it wasn't just those 40 years when he was still alive. 2,600 years later, we're still benefiting from these teachings. Yeah. And we are still kind of cleansing our eyes from dust so that we become more available to this deep understanding, this process of understanding. So this is possible for us. And it's possible for each one of us to understand and to apply, and then to understand and to apply the application of the insight, the exploration of the insight, as, as people have been doing already over these days, and then the deepening of understanding and the continued application. So another thread I'd like to pull out this morning is that um, when we act to alleviate suffering and to um, nourish well-being, this is a movement of compassion. Just yeah. so we're touching more on the wisdom element. This is a movement of compassion also. Yeah. There's the wisdom of seeing things are conditioned. And then there's that heart's wish to alleviate suffering, our own and that of others. And we do it, yeah, that wish to alleviate and attend to suffering, both the suffering that's already arisen, yeah, but we're also, as we're practicing in this way, we're also dec decreasing, we're attending to the suffering that has not yet come, yeah, because we're changing the conditioning from the root, yeah, cultivating ways of relating to experience that reduce suffering for ourselves and others so we can start to see why it's worth doing <laughs> yeah it's in the moment and over time and we know this right it's a movement of compassion what happens when we meet ill being when we meet any degree of unease or of distress with compassion and care rather than with the habits of rejection of self-pity which is a type of self-rejection mm -hmm. Rather than with those habits, we actually meet it with compassion and care that are kind of there to hold the experience and to support us through it. And there's a sense we can maybe get a sense of the confidence that comes with the compassion. It's not belittling us, it's empowering us, it's holding us up and to 
attend uh, to our lives. So as we meet our experience with, with compassion, rather than with the kind of pushing away what we perceive as bringing ill-being and the trying to hold on to what we perceive as bringing well-being, uh, the dukkha is drained from the experience. Yeah, we're holding it all with compassion and care. And there's less layers of contraction, as we were speaking yesterday, which arises with dukkha. There's less layers of demand, which arise with dukkha. So this is our practice. Yeah, we're going to explore this in our meditation. Yeah, this applying this confluence, this coming together, the wisdom of seeing, ah, this is conditioned. Yeah. Amongst other re amongst other conditions, my way of relating is impacting. And how can I hold my experience? How can I meet it in wise and compassionate ways? So that it is shaped in a different direction towards well-being rather than ill-being. And we keep doing this over and over again. So that's the that's the reflection, and let's bring it together into a practice. Yeah. If you're not already in a comfortable posture, or maybe even if you are, just checking if you need to make any adjustments so that the body is as comfortable, as balanced, and at ease as possible. Just a remind here that the meditation is half an hour long. So, if at any point yesterday there was a whole discussion of too much talking, too little talking, um, if it's too much talking, just mute, set yourself a timer. Taking some moments to settle into the posture, make any adjustments that are needed. As you do so, having a sense of care and kindness. The body, heart and mind. Remembering that intention of practice as an act of kindness and care. Feeling also how when we check in with the posture, the awareness is invited more fully and deeply into the body. Inviting the awareness to settle, ground and collect with the body, it's helpful. We can use the contact areas. Body with seat. Contact of the body with the ground.
getting to know this groundedness at any point in the practice, if it's helpful, we can come back to it. Immediacy, the simplicity of the sensations of contact, the place to rest, the awareness. For now, we'll also open the awareness from the contact, let it open. Letting the awareness expand through the space of the body, fill the space of the body. Will we get a feeling, a sense of the whole body sitting here, standing, reclining, whatever the posture is that you are walking. The whole body here, awareness wide and open through the body and then seeing if it's helpful to have a more specific, particular anchor for attention within the wide body awareness, like the flow and movement of breath or of sound. Choosing a particular anchor. For this time, breath of sound, or the body itself, that's a helpful anchor for you. You might stay with that. Keeping the awareness grounded in the body and wide, expansive through the whole body. As you attend, to the object, the anchor of your attention, moment by moment, receiving it in kindness and care. So let's practice in this way.
it's gently opening to notice what you notice, what's present in your experience right now without judging. Softening awareness through the body as we were doing yesterday, just softening through the whole body. Receiving your experience with kindness, care, compassion. As many times as is needed, grounding in the contact sensations and in this wide body awareness, filling the whole body, and softening the whole body space. And the anchor of attention, whether it's the contact sensations in the body or the flow of the breath or of sound, Rising in awareness, known in awareness, flowing through awareness, being met with kindness and interest and care. Even if what we're meeting is a so-called distraction or an unpleasant sensation, needing to reject as we re-establish, meeting with kindness and following that movement of compassion and care and kindness back to the anchor of attention. Tending with compassion as often as much as is needed.
softening any momentum of rejection and contraction. Bringing interest to this moment of experience. What is here? Muting with interest and kindness. As you align more fully, more deeply with this intention of kindness and care. And as you establish awareness and attention more fully, more deeply with the anchor you have chosen for this time. Tuning in again and again to this attitude of kindness, care and compassion in the meeting with experience. Softening. Softening and opening with what is here. Attending with kindness to the hearing, to the body sensations, or to the flow and movement of the breathing.
softening and opening over and over again, meeting experience moment by moment with kindness and interest, resting more fully in the body, nourishing this attitude of kindness, care and compassion. Letting ourselves be bathed and filled with kindness, care and compassion. For the last five minutes or so, letting that be our primary practice. Softening awareness through the whole body. Letting the whole body and the whole space of awareness be filled with compassion, with kindness. For the last minute or so, it's 
opening to let the whole body and the whole space of awareness be bathed in compassion and care and kindness. Softening and opening to let yourself soak that in more deeply. And letting it also radiate out into the world. Sending compassion and kindness to all of us here, this Sangha without borders. And feeling this wish for all beings to live with care and kindness, to be free from suffering and its causes. Feeling that wish radiating out from each of us and from all of us into the world. When the bell rings in a moment, letting that also be a means of radiating compassion out into the world for all beings everywhere. So thank you for your practice. Taking your time to open the eyes or move if you wish. And before we open to some questions, just a few words of um, encouragement to explore dana practice as many of you know all of you know these sessions are offered freely they're offered in the spirit of dana which means they're offered from sangha live they're offered from teachers like myself without uh, a fixed price or expectation with the encouragement to explore our own um wish and possibility to offer uh, back to support the Sangha Live platform, um, to cover all the costs involved in making these sessions happen, and to support uh, this week myself uh, for the teachings. And the encouragement today to feel the giving, to feel the dana practice as a movement of kindness and compassion in the world. So just like you know, I mentioned earlier, 2,600 years we've been um, benefiting from the Buddha's teachings and a lot of it because of that ongoing commitment to compassion and to dana of countless beings who've been practicing, who've been teaching, who've been sharing um, their practice and their teachings and who've been supporting um, teachers and the Dharma community to, to be able to keep offering this. So we can feel that movement of compassion that we're recipients of and also um, that we can participate in. And so whatever you give this week will be shared between Sangha Live and myself. Uh, I'm putting the link there to the uh, Dana page and uh, anything you offer is very welcome, including if it's not possible for you to offer anything that's equally welcome. So let's see if there's any questions, reflections, comments. Um, we are using the chat for that. So if you wish to ask a question, uh, please put it in the chat. And if you can begin by um, putting the word question in capital letters, then it makes it easier for me to 
to um, pick that up. Um, and equally, any comments and reflections are really welcome. Yesterday we had quite a few comments and reflections that were about the practice that were really helpful. And uh, questions, comments, reflections, both on anything I've said today on the guided practice or on anything else to do with your practice, they're all um, very welcome. So let's see what appears. I'm currently going through a phase of struggling with loneliness. I can easily go down the poor me rabbit hole, which I'm aware is not helpful. I heard you connect self-pity to self-rejection. Could you speak a bit more about this? Yeah. So there's a really interesting distinction in the teachings between pity and compassion. Um, and so pity is spoken of as the near enemy of compassion, something that looks like compassion, but actually uh is is not at all um and one way we can distinguish is we can feel that when there's compassion towards ourselves and towards another there's a sense of empathy there yes yeah? so compassion includes empathy and there's a sense of connection there and with that we, if we kind of tune into the awareness of the body that will be will have quite a lot of space there won't be a lot of contraction there'll be quite a lot of spaciousness and expansiveness pity has a very different flavor um it has a flavor of separation actually and we can see it um maybe more easily with somebody else when we pity someone there's a sense of i'm over here and you're over there and in in some ways there's a sense sometimes of superiority or you know poor you for having that um experience yeah and lucky me that i haven't you know so that it can come with that kind of um separation uh in it and it comes with a sense of contraction because the separation is there because the sense of self is stronger now how does that um maybe already starting to make sense when we feel self-pity there's a part in ourselves that's kind of reaffirming a sense that I'm not good enough you know my experience is good, not good enough my life is not good enough and I'm not good enough and somehow my my it's my fault in some way and there's a belittling it's it's making us smaller rather than larger and that's why I kind of said the self-pity is actually a type of self you can say like one part of ourselves is rejecting another part the part that feels that is is having a difficult time rather than holding that part in compassion and just you know we can think of like with a friend or somebody else um often what's really helpful for us when we're feeling down or low is someone just really being there with us rather than having a sense of them looking down on us or trying to fix us or trying to fix our problem um and equally, this is another aspect drowning in our misery with us. You know, that's another kind of thing that can happen, can get sucked in to the unhappiness. And so having a sense of, you know, some supportive uh, energy that can come in, um, that is there with us, yeah, but it is not uh, separate from us and is not enmeshed into the, um, the unhappiness. Um, and so that's what I was meaning with the self-rejection. There's something there that's belittling, that's kind of um, and, and getting enmeshed and, and drowning in that sense of, uh, you know, the poor me, as you put it. Um, and rather than, yes, this is hard. Yeah, this is hard. And, and maybe you can feel the difference in that. Yeah, this is hard. Yeah. This is tough. You know, loneliness is painful. Yeah. but from a sense of groundedness and openness so i hope i hope that helps jackie and let me know if you want me to to clarify things a bit more or in a particular direction um i see there's another uh reflection there from joss 
Oh, that was really beautiful today. I was so aware of the Sangha and how being here live with you today made so much difference. Why is it so much stronger to practice with others and how we can we find the strength when practicing alone? Yeah, thanks, Joss. It's, it's a beautiful question. It connects a little bit to the previous one. Yeah, the sense of that separation and connection, that distinction. Um, we are relational beings, right? We're relational beings. And so the sense of community is uh, very important to us. Yeah, it's not a um it's not a mistake that the buddha called the sangha you know the community the most important yeah the entirety of this of the spiritual um, path um it's a really important aspect and it's also important for us in, in other ways you're yeah? having a sense of togetherness of, of non-separation we can say you know what happens when i feel like i'm practicing on my own i feel separate and disconnected what happens when i feel like I'm practicing with others, even though I can't see them. <laughs> it's really interesting, right? With this platform, can't see them. We only know that they're there. Yeah, the chat really helps, but we know they're there. And um, that is incredibly supportive. So one thing is not to feel like there's something wrong with us because we benefit from practicing with others. Yeah, that's why we're all here. It's wonderful. It's really helpful. And aren't we fortunate, you know, really celebrating gratitude, uh, bringing gratitude and celebration, appreciation to the fact that this is possible, that this, like I said, when I was practicing in the beginning of my practice in the 90s, had to travel all the way to India to sit retreats. So, you know, now it's here and we can connect and a lot of gratitude and appreciation for that. And also the awareness that we are offering that to each other. So you're not only benefiting, you're also contributing. Now, what can be helpful at times, um, you know, when it's not a Sangha Life session or a Guy House, ODH or whatever, um, how to tune into that. So this is something we like to do, um, which is to know that at any given moment, it's actually impossible to be practicing on your own. Yeah, we have this sense I'm practicing on my own, but somewhere, somewhere on this planet, there's at least one other person. Yeah, practicing at any given moment and we can tune into that yeah likely a lot more than one but we can just have a sense of ah right now here's a here's you know there's others practicing uh right at this moment yeah across the world and some of them i know and some of them i don't know and i can tune into that sense of others practicing uh, with me. You can even tune in if you're familiar with meta practice. You can tune in and know that somewhere in the world someone is sending meta to you. Yeah, it's a beautiful way of practicing. So we can actually begin our practice by opening to that. Yeah, by opening to that sense of how oh, there's others practicing. There's somebody sending meta to me. And can I also send meta uh, to all beings at this time? And another way of connecting is through a dedication. It's actually having a sense as you sit down to do your practice that you're dedicating your practice to all beings. And again, there's others dedicating their practice to you. So you can play with all of that to bring more of a sense um, of connectedness um, and, and strength in the practice. And the last thing I'll say um, is that, um, you know, this uh, we, we want to learn how to practice across different situations. So, yes, it's easier, it's helpful, it's wonderful when we're together, but you might want to practice say on the weekends or other times when there isn't that opportunity, or you know, just for yourself at another time. And then just saying that okay, this is more difficult, but that it's really important, it's really helpful, it's really growing that capacity of the of the heart and mind. Um yeah so hopefully that's helpful um and really enjoying that sense of community that we can see here. all right another question i can sometimes feel very scared i can find my mind becomes very worried and i can get lost on the verge of tears how can i just sit and let the confusion be and let the sadness express yeah there's a lot of layers uh, to that, Henry. Um, so sometimes 
um, you know, we, we can attend to this in different ways. Uh, sometimes it, we might bring attention to the body and ground in the body. And that would be helpful to find a way of being with something and allowing it to be. Uh, sometimes we actually need to do something. Yeah, so if it feels overwhelming, actually opening the eyes and taking in the space around you may be helpful to create a larger space for the fear yeah, or for the worry. So it might be that that's what's needed is to create a bigger space. Um, sometimes placing a hand on the heart area. Just uh, there's fear, there's tears, there's sadness, there's an emotion. Uh, here that I want to give space to and not pushing that the tears need to come not pushing but it needs to express in that way but just giving it space just giving it space uh, confusion is a mixture of uh, restlessness and doubt often you know like you say it's like you, you you kind of put together fear worry um feeling lost confusion yeah all of these together and so um i i would say um yeah having a sense of, of groundedness or so this hand on the heart or two hands on the heart or on the sometimes on the legs play with what helps grounds and bring a sense brings a sense of um of care and that's kind of the combination that you want to and and sometimes using phrases can also really help just ah i'm here i'm here or you're okay to yourself you're okay with the hand. I actually got one on my heart now and one on my leg. That feels pretty good. You're okay. So seeing what helps open the space, what helps you to be grounded, and what helps the sense of compassion there, of just being with uh, yourself in that experience without putting pressure, um, but also knowing if it gets too much, it's okay to um, to open even further. So I hope that's helpful, Henry, and thank you all for being here. Thank you for your practice. Thank you for your questions, wonderful questions, um, and for your listening. And um, looking forward to uh, tomorrow already. Go well, everyone. Take care.